On Wednesday, we told you about the energy war in Europe. We told you how Europe had two choices, A, given to Russia, or B, take the bitter pill and ration power. It seems Europe has chosen option A. They're giving in to Vladimir Putin's demands. Now, what exactly was Putin asking for? Rubles. Putin said, if you want Russian gas, pay in our currency. No more euros, no more dollars. You must pay in the Russian ruble. The idea was to bolster the currency, to keep it competitive. At first, Europe aggressively pushed back. They called it blackmail. Here's what German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said back in March. We have looked at the contracts for gas supplies and other supplies. It says that payment is made in euros, sometimes dollars, but usually in euros. And I made it clear in the conversation with the Russian president that that will remain the case. No confusion there. Payments will continue to be made in euros. That's what the chancellor said. 28 days later, things have changed. German energy giants are planning to follow Putin's decree. The biggest player is Uniper. Here's what the company is saying. We consider a payment conversion complaint compliant rather with sanctions law and the Russian decree to be possible for our company and for Germany as a whole it is not possible to do without Russian gas in the short term and Uniper is just one company reports say many more are lining up to do the same Austrian company OMV Italy's any all of them are planning to comply with Putin's demand Reports say 10 companies have opened accounts at the Gazprom bank. Four of them have started payments. What is the European Union saying about all of this? Buying gas is one thing. Buying gas on Putin's terms is another. The EU continues to emphasize on one thing. You cannot pay in rubles. Well, if that's the case, what will happen to all of these companies? Uniper, OMV, ENI, and all the others. Technically, the EU will have to take action against them. But so far, Brussels has been silent. And there's a reason for that. A convenient loophole in their sanctions. Let me explain how this works. A few days back, the European Commission published a guidance for companies, sort of like a cheat book. And this guidance had three objectives. One, uphold EU sanctions. Two, abide by Putin's decree. And three, secure natural gas for Europe. Basically, it was a win-win for both sides. And here's how it works. European companies must open two accounts at the Gazprom Bank. One ruble account, one euro account. The payments should still be made in euros, but Gazprom Bank will convert those euros into rubles. In other words, the company pays in euros, but Russia gets the money in rubles. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely sanctions are not that easy to sidestep. And you're right, they're not. Because to convert the currency, you need Russia's central bank. The problem is Europe has sanctioned Russia's central bank. Any business with them is banned. So Brussels has come up with another idea, sort of like a technicality. Normally, a payment is confirmed only after the currency has been converted. In this case, only after the euros become rubles. That's when the payment will be confirmed. But the EU now says, don't wait for that. Pay in euros, get your payment confirmed. What happens next is none of your concern. Ingenious, right? Also morally bankrupt. This is more than a loophole because Russia is still getting paid in rubles. The companies are still following Putin's decree. In effect, this is a violation of sanctions, Europe's own sanctions. But Europe doesn't care. Without Russian gas, their people will suffer. It's a choice between air conditioning and peace. Germany has clearly chosen air conditioning. A few others are delaying the inevitable, like Italy. Their government has unveiled a new strategy, Operation Thermostat. Italians will have to ration their ACs. Not less than 25 degrees in the summer, not more than 19 degrees in the winter. Schools and public buildings will have to comply. This scheme will run from May 2022 to April 2023, so one year. I know it sounds like some big sacrifice, but consider this. All these sanctions, all this power rationing, the end goal is to stop Russia's war. At the same time, Europe is paying 200 to 800 million euros per day to Russia. In other words, funding Putin's war machine. Since the invasion, 70% of Russia's fossil fuels have ended up in Europe. So all this talk of countering Putin is hypocrisy. Imagine Britain buying gas from Nazi Germany during the Second World War, or France, or America. You cannot bankroll and criticize the same war. But that's exactly what Europe is doing. German companies pay millions of euros to Russia. Russia uses that money to wage war. That same Germany also sends tanks and missiles to Ukraine, and those tanks will destroy Russian weapons. Moral of the story, all the lectures on principles are a farce. What matters in the end is your own interests.
Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.